everybody, welcome back to Grunt Reviews. We are back in the studio. I have got a, another box in my hand. Guys, we're starting the review process, so this will be our tabletop and unboxing of the Beretta M9A4 pistol. Guys, as always, go down below, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and drop a comment with your thoughts. Definitely helps us with the YouTube algorithms. If you like what we're doing for you here at the channel, I've got my Buy Me A Coffee link down in the description, and let's get into it. We will get rolling on this bad boy. So first thing obviously does come in an exterior cardboard box. And I hope you can read that. This is more a sad state of uh, society. But on the target, they put make sure to take out product before using targets. No further commentary needed. Just sad that we have to put that disclaimer on the box. So inside, we have the nice Beretta branded uh, ammo can. Let me switch the side here that this whole thing comes in. Very nice uh, seal setup. It is uh, waterproofed or waterproof style, I should say. Not totally sure I want to test that out. Do have a, a nice foam interior inside of it. They give you a few goodies. So we get a extra set of grips. This is going to be if you prefer that more traditional style uh, Beretta feel to your firearm. They've got the grip with the back plate on it. Of course, we do have our firearm lock. Nothing else in that hole. They do give you some spare O-rings uh, for the thread protector on the barrel. They give you, I'm assuming these are going to be either grip screws or these are going to be the screws for the uh, red dot mounting plate, one of the two. We get our manual and a, looks like a USCCA card there. The Beretta warranty packet, our firearms manual. And then the other one that I did want to mention with this, there is a little card inserted into a lot of these. And essentially, I will explain it as follows. So we do have the firearm itself, and you'll notice it comes with uh, one magazine. Uh, this one is an 18 rounder, and it does have the tan base plate, and it has all of the individual witness holes on it. The other two magazines, it comes with just have a single set, uh, same capacity of course, um, but these are essentially off-the-shelf uh, Metgar magazines. That card explains essentially that they ran out of stock, if you will, and when they do come back into stock, they'll give you a code to get two of the tan magazines for free. Kind of sucks that they don't come with them, but on that same point in time, if they're going to give you two extra magazines, uh, for the price of this, you end up with five mags, and that's uh, actually not a, uh, not a terrible deal. Let me get this, oops, get this box out of our way, and we will look at the star of the show. All right, so what we've got before us, of course, is the handgun itself. This is the latest generation, essentially, of the Breda M9, the M9A4. There are some similarities to previous generations, and there are also a, uh, a couple new add-ons. When we start at the front, obviously, the, uh, the iconic Breda look. These have been around forever. Um, you're very, very easy to discern what it is just by the appearance. Um, but does come with a threaded barrel and a nice thread protector. Something I will mention, uh, we, will be, uh, we will be trying this out suppressed, but the thread protector itself, very smooth feeling to it. Um, you don't get that grittiness or notchiness that you get with some firearms the first time you take it on and, on and off. Should be a tribute to quality, uh, quality machine work there. Obviously, we're getting into some of the uh, 50 shades of FDE type look, um, but we have uh, the barrel itself does appear to be Cerakoted. I would say the, and I could be off on this one, I would say the slide is also Cerakoted, whereas the frame looks to be anodized. Um, aluminum, I believe st 
steel or stainless steel, that part I'd have to double check, obviously the barrel itself. Um, but you do get some of that scar style 50 shades of FDE that does appear uh, to be popular lately. Sights, both front and rear sight, these do appear to be uh, made by True Glow. I'm seeing the TG writing on them. Um, but these are both tritium night sights. And then before I flip this over, one of the latest things that Beretta has finally brought to the market is the ability to mount a red dot with, or mount the red dot of your choice with a plate. When you register this handgun, they will send you one plate of your choice for free. So they've got like the RMR Hollow Sun, they've got, I believe it's like the Dr. Noblex type cut. Um, I'd have to check on the other two, but it's your, essentially your four most common uh, optics cuts. They'll send you the plate for free. Extractor, let's see if we can see this in the video. You do get a, a loaded chamber indicator indicated in red. Hopefully that pops up there. As we work our way more to the rear along the slide, the safety is no longer a safety on this. So these have always, uh, you've had the option, uh, I believe it's the G model of just the decocker, and then you've also had uh, anybody who carried the M9 uh, in the service is familiar that they do uh, function as a safety as well. This one is a decocker only. So any of the three hammer positions, the half cock or the full cock, that decocker is going to allow you to decock it. Obviously no manual safety there. One of the cool things, if you've never seen a Beretta up close, one of the very cool things about this handgun, uh, just as overall, is you can kind of see all of the parts working. So this decocker actually spins the firing pin uh, extension essentially up and out of the way so that when the hammer comes forward, obviously we don't have a, an AD or an ND, however you'd like to look at that. External hammer, of course, with the three positions we discussed, so all the way forward, it's got a half cock, and it has, of course, the full cocked position or the single action position. One thing I will mention, uh, it can be fired from any of the three hammer positions. So, obviously traditional double action stroke there, we can pull it back and it actually will take up uh, some of that initial pre-travel in double action mode. So it can be fired from the half cock and then obviously single action mode from the full cock. And one thing that's always been kind of cool about these is you can actually watch the, uh, all of the external parts moving. You can see the firing pin block move as you get right there to the, uh, to the end of the trigger stroke. Not a huge deal, but always just been kind of cool and kind of fascinated to watch it. I'm a bit of a gadget guy, so that to me has always been neat. As we roll over to the other side, this thing is set up for right-handed shooters. I won't say only, but predominantly. Obviously, we have the trigger mechanism on the right-hand side of the firearm, so we can't have a uh, double-sided slide release or slide lock, whatever your preferred terminology is there. Uh, the decocker, of course, is ambi, does not have a safety, and then the uh, magazine release is set up on the right-hand side. Takedown, very, very similar to every other Beretta on the planet. You push the button on the right side all the way through, you move your uh, takedown lever out of the way, and then you're able to just slide it completely apart. Reassembly, very simple. Pull it, uh, pull it to slide lock, rotate it up and out of the way, and push it forward and you're ready to roll. As we work our way down just a little bit, what's nice is you do get that Picatinny rail section there. Uh, you get three slots of it and it is the more lightweight style with that cut down the center. Uh, but for mounting the uh, light, laser, uh, whatever it is you need to mount to the front, you do have the pick section to do that there. Decent sized trigger guard, of course, for use with uh, gloved hands. And then you do get the uh, plastic, I'm gonna say the G10 style grips almost. 
um, but you get uh, individual grips obviously in the box you do have that one wrap around if you prefer that little bit more traditional Beretta style feel to your particular pistol we have a little bit of checkering on the aluminum portion of the uh, lower receiver essentially or the grip we've got some so it's more of a smooth texture, I guess is the uh, best way to put this. There's some grip, but it's not really aggressive. That is repeated also on the front as well. And then the actual side panels, these actually really do have a good amount of grip to them. I actually, uh, props to Beretta for this. Um, these things have just the right amount of bite. You almost get that sandpapery feel without being too aggressive. I would say this would be the very high end of uh, what you would use for a carry firearm. Something I will I will mention if you depending on how you are carrying this does have the uh, potential to snag clothing, uh, snag the hem of a shirt or something like that. Uh, so something to be aware of. But in terms of the actual feel in your hand, um, I would say with sweat or grease, oil, whatever else you may have in your hand, these grips should allow you to maintain a positive control of the firearm uh, itself. So very well done on the grips. Um, the design has remained the same for decades and decades, but some of these modernizations they've done to it have allowed this to stay competitive in the uh, defensive, Obviously, this was put up as a, uh, or something very similar was put up as a competitor for the Army's uh, firearms modernization program that ultimately went to SIG. But they have done a good job bringing this into the uh, eh, mid to late 2000s slash 2020. They're still behind the power curve, but they're catching up. Weight-wise, obviously this thing is essentially an all-metal design. So, let me get my scale all set up here. And hopefully this comes through, so that's cleared out. So, the handgun itself, with one magazine, we are at one pound, 14.96 ounces. Hopefully that comes through in the camera there. And last but not least, we are gonna talk about the trigger. This seems to be the part of the reviews people enjoy. So, this is a double action, single action. Let me decock this here. If you're not familiar with your, uh, your double action or DASA, whatever you like to call it, your first shot, obviously with no safety, when you are uh, carrying with one in the pipe, as you should be, as you pull that back, that first shot's double action, so it both cocks the hammer and releases it. When you fire, obviously the slide moves, next round comes in, it puts you back into that single action mode, much shorter reset, and then you're ready to go again. Many of you may already know this, but if you're new to DASA, just kind of wanted to highlight that. This has their new, I believe they're calling it the Extreme or the Extreme S trigger, and they have it announced as a short reset. I would very, very much agree in the single action mode, double action still a little bit long, so we'll walk you through it here. Single action, we'll start at the back. We've got just a little take up in single action. We get on that wall, you can actually start to see that firing pin block moving out of the way there. We get on that wall and just a hair of creep, break. And then reset. We are back on that wall, just that little bit of creep there, and break. Double action, pretty, pretty long trigger pull there. Obviously there's more that it has to do during that stroke. Feels very consistent throughout the entire stroke. Um, I don't feel any weird notchiness or stacking, but all the way through, back on the last portion there, and our break. Weight-wise, we're going to measure this both ways. I've got my handy-dandy Lyman Digital Trigger Gauge here. 
So single action mode, we're gonna pull that back. And brake, we are at five pounds, 9.4 ounces there. We're gonna grab one more pull in single action. Five pounds, 5.2 ounces there. So pretty consistently around the five pound mark. Would like to see that a little bit lower, maybe closer to four. Just a suggestion if anyone from uh, Beretta is listening. In double action, this one gets real heavy. All right, double action, we are nine pounds, 3.1 ounces. Do that one more time here. All right. Nine pounds and 7.4 ounces on the second pull. So we're still looking uh, around nine in double action and around five in single. Would be nice if they had brought that down just a little bit. I'm gonna say around the four, four and a quarter mark in single, maybe closer to seven and a half in double. That's just my personal preference. Your mileage may vary. But just wanted to give you this overview. Of course, we are always going to, uh, we are gonna take this out to the range. Uh, we're going to try a variety of ammunition with it. We are going to try it suppressed as well, as these things do make a great host for a can. Guys, hope this overview helped. If you do have any questions, guys, drop them down below. I'm glad to answer anything that you may have. I appreciate your time watching this. Stay safe. Train hard.